Hello, welcome to Security Update with me, Hamza Dabcheri. In this program, we will be covering for you the latest stories that matter security in the African countries from West to Horn of Africa. Ahead on the program, Uganda sends fresh troops to Somalia. Around 50 Somali female police officers conclude specialized training in Turkey. Militants kill 150 civilians in Ethiopia. Plus, Burkina Faso to restructure security of the deadly attack. Welcome to our program. Uganda has finally sent extra troops to Somalia to fight against Al-Shabaab as the country prepares to hold parliamentary and presidential elections in the following months. The Ugandan government has decided to dispatch new troops to serve under the framework of African Union mission in Somalia ahead of parliamentary and presidential elections in the Horn of Africa nation. A total of 1,848 officers of the Ugandan People's Defense Forces under the Patel Group 33 were the weekend flagged off to Somalia by Uganda Army Chief. The military post warned the soldiers against any misconduct during the mission, term in any case of indiscipline, including the sale of food rations and weaponry to Somali people by the member of the battle group as madness. The Ugandan contingent remains the largest contingent in Amazon, with 6,223 troops based in Sector 1, which comprises Penadi, Middle and Lower Shabela regions. Until now, Uganda has deployed 12 battle groups into the mission area. Around 50 Somali female police officers have finalized specializing training in Turkey. Somalia's police chief Abde Hazan Hijar attended the effort and praised the role of Somali young women to be part of the National Army. About 50 female Somali officers have completed specialized training in Turkey ahead of the country's parliamentary and presidential elections. Officials from Somali government, including Somali police chief Abdi Hassan Mohamed Hijar, officials from Turkish government have attended the conclusion ceremony of the training. The Somali police chief Abdi Hassan Hijar said that these Somali female police officers have undergone advanced training that will have much value to this Horn of Africa state. Turkey has been a reliable partner in rebuilding Somalia across all sectors and has been a crucial strategic partner in training and equipping Somali troops, particularly the Gorgor Special Police Unit. Turkey's biggest overseas military training base, which was inaugurated in 2017, is located in Somalia and is also among the largest foreign-run military centers in the country. The Ethiopian Human Rights Commission said Friday that a total of 150 civilians were massacred in the Gida Kiramu locality in the east of Wolega zone in Ethiopia's most powerless region and state of Oromia. The attack was allegedly committed by those linked to Romo Liberation Front, Shene, Ola Shene militant group. The commission said following the massacre that revealed the character of the ethnically motivated attack, Resident launched a retaliatory strike that killed 60 people. The attack by Ola Shane came after security forces deployed to the area, left for reasons not specified, according to the government appointed but autonomous rights watchdog. It said security forces were backed in the area that saw some semblance of normalcy, but the situation was still volatile. It called on the government to reinforce security in the wider region to protect civilians from any more attacks. Last month, Ola Shane and the Tigray People's Liberation Front announced they are forming an alliance to fight the government led by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, who came to power in April 2018. Topped a terror organization by the Ethiopian parliament, the TPLF has been launching incessant attacks in the northern region of states of Amhara and Hafar. Seven people, including a top religious figure, have been arrested by the South Sudanese security forces in a fresh crackdown on critics in the East African nation. Cabinet Affairs Minister Martin Elia Lumoru on Sunday said the two had reached an agreement for a joint force which was critical for the implementation of the revitalized peace agreement. Mr. Macha's office in a statement termed the announcement as false, adding that the issue remains unresolved. The minister had said the two leaders had agreed that the president's party takes 60% share of the unified forces, with the remaining share being divided between Mr. Macha's party and other opposition parties. Mr. Macha's office said previous talks 
had proposed an equal share between President Kerry's party and his side, while another proposal called for 50 to 45 sharing. President Kerr and Mr. Machar formed a unity government in February last year and agreed as part of a revitalized peace deal to form a unified national army of 83,000 forces. The Butland state of Somalia has extended support with army vehicles to this neighbor state, Galmuduk. The two states have cooperation in the fights against Al-Shabaab and ISIS in their states. Butlan has donated military equipment and vehicles to the Galmuduk administration, who have been battling Al Shabaab fighters in the southern Muduk region for the past several weeks. Butlan also handed over to this neighbor state with the water tankers and ambulances. Butlan officially said the move is part of the neighbor line's cooperation and collaboration between the two administrations so that their people can live in peace. Galmuduk security senior officers extended gratitude to Butlan for its support in liberating Galmuduk from Al Shabaab. The two states have cooperation in the fights against Al Shabaab and ISIS fighters in their states. They also pledge to strengthen their cooperation in all sectors of development and, in particular, removing Al Shabaab from their territories. Zambia's new president, Hakainde Hishilema, has replaced the country's top military commanders and the head of the police, signaling a focus on the security forces being more accountable to the citizens. But we will be back after the short break. to CBA TV, the voice of East Africa and beyond. Uh, there are so many people around the world who are watching along with you. Welcome back again. Zambia's new president, Hakainde Hishilema, has replaced the country's top military commanders and the head of the police, signaling a focus on the security forces being more accountable to the citizens. It's very clear what our agenda is, and that's what the people of Zambia bought. The president late on Sunday announced new commanders of the Zambia Army, the Air Force and the National Service, and their deputies, as well as new inspector general of the police. All regional police commissioners have been relieved of their duties, but their replacements have not been named. Mr. Hichelma said the new office barriers must have the interest of the people at heart and serve the country diligently while ensuring human rights, freedoms and liberties are respected. He said the police must carry out proper checks before detaining suspects and that no one should be arrested before investigations are concluded. Mr. H. Chalema was voted in as president earlier this month in a landslide victory has been the victim of police brutality in the past. He has been arrested and detained multiple times in the past and had promised to deal with the heavy-handedness of the security forces. Security forces of Somalia confirmed killing one man in Mogadishu and accused him of destabilizing the main road. The security forces also affirmed no other casualties in the process. Banadi Regional Police said they have shot dead a suspect man at Yakshi District in Mogadishu. The police said they shot him after he attempted to attack the security forces who were on duty at the time. Reports say the man was armed with an AK-47 rifle and grenades, and security forces believe his target was to attack Somali civilians for unknown reasons. Police officially stated they had security alert and they were all paying attention to him before he launched the attack. The police declined to disclose the suspect's name to the public. Residents say the situation of the district has returned to normalcy and the public movement resumed a while after the district had previously experienced similar incidents. Burkina Faso on Friday said that it will 
of how it is security forces to cope with 6-year militant insurgents that has claimed more than 1,400 lives and forced 1.3 million people from their homes. The government will review the structural and operational organization of the National Defense and Security Forces. Junior Defense Minister General Aim Batlimi Sempori announced at a press conference in the capital of Degudu. Major reforms will take place to reorganize and adapt forces to take into account threat from terrorism, he said, adding that the overhaul will take place under the guidance of President Rokmak Christian Kabori, who is also Defense Minister. The immediate step will be to work to protect the public and property, especially helping the country's internally displaced population, he said. Sempuri said the changes will focus on information systems, logistics and living conditions for the armed forces, but did not give details. One of the poorest countries in the world, Burkina Faso, is struggling with an insurgency that swept in from neighboring Mali in 2015. Its armed forces are poorly trained and equipped against highly mobilized jihadist units linked to Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State group. The groups are adept at ambushing highway convoys, planting roadside bombs and carrying hit and run raids on remote villages. Military commanders of the African Union mission in Somalia agreed to accelerate the implementation of joint operations with Somalia National Army, enhance electoral security and prepare for Amazon post-2021. Military commanders of African Union mission in Somalia, AMISOM, have agreed to accelerate the implementation of joint operations with the Somalia National Army to enhance electoral security and prepare for AMISOM post-2021. At a two-day meeting in Mogadishu, the commanders evaluated progress made so far on AMISOM's concept of operations, the Somalia Transition Plan, and on implementing the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2568 2021. The Somalia Transition Plan is a comprehensive strategy developed by the Federal Government of Somalia and its partners to guide the transfer of security responsibilities to Somalia security forces ahead of AMISOM's exit from the country. The output of this meeting will be definitely inform and feed into the process underway, preparing the upcoming sector commanders conference with uh, the SSF and other partners. As part of the concept of operations, AMISOM has been reconfiguring its military, police and civilian components. Under this, the military commanders of AMISOM and Somalia National Army have had several engagements to develop a detailed plan to implement the military aspect of the concept. As directed by the concept of operations, AMISOM commanders have already established mobile and quick reaction forces within their area of responsibility to enhance the effectiveness of military operations in countering the threats posed by Al-Shabaab fighters. The reconfiguration has enabled AMISOM to maintain operational effectiveness, respond to threats, and plan future target operations in line with the gradual transfer of security responsibilities to Somalia forces. After the two-day event, AMISOM Force Commander Lieutenant General Diomide Indigeye said whatever the nature of the post-2021 mission, it is imperative for all troops in the sectors to strengthen their offensive capability. I personally appreciate the enduring work you do in the sectors for the sake of peace and stability of this great country, Somalia. However, there is a need to generate a joint AMISOM SNA realistic, workable, and a fixed CONOPS, which calls for an appropriate threat assessment and an honest assessment of the friendly forces. The Deputy Force Commander of AMISOM in charge of operations and plans, Major General William Kitsau Shumi, told the commanders that while challenges exist, great progress has been made. Kamil Sadiq, 
CBA TV. And with that story of the military commanders of the African Union mission in Somalia have agreed to accelerate the implementation of joint operations with the Somali National Army to enhance electoral security and prepare for army zone post-2021. We'll wrap up our program for this time. Thank you very much for being with us. <laughs>